Hello Potter Puppets and welcome back to the <laughs> I'm in a good mood and you've seen why I found some vintage items in a charity shop story time so yesterday I was kind of just sat there and I thought I need to go to the charity shop that is of like round the corner that made no sense that is round the corner from uh, my house and normally when I get this urge to go to that charity shop I normally find something not necessarily Harry Potter but I normally find something to uh, go in my house in yeah and once again my instincts did not fail me so yeah today I'm going to show you what I found now there are two items of these I say vintage right it's like 2001 sort of thing Annette right why is it called vintage why? 1970s is vintage but I'm rather excited about my finds and I'm rather excited to show you so if you would like to see my vintage Harry Potter items from 2001 that I found for less than £5 at a charity shop. Then do carry on watching. And uh, also, if this is the first time you are seeing this face, welcome to the channel. Subscribe for magical stuff. Massive thank you to the subscribers on this channel that are channel members. You guys are magical legends. Okay, so the first thing that I found, right, I'll show you the first thing that I found. Well, no, it, it was the second thing that I found when I'm doing this in an opposite order. We do have Harry Potter. Oh, my days, it's the Philosopher's, Philosopher, no, no, it's the Philosopher's Stone soundtrack. So on the back here, we've got the, the pro, prologue or whatever you say, that's on all CDs. CD, this is a CD for those of you that don't know. Harry's Wondrous World, The Arrival of Baby Harry, Visit to the Zoo and Letters from Hogwarts, Diagon Alley and the Gringotts Vault, Platform 9 and 3 quarters and the Journey to Hogwarts, Entry into the Great Hall and the Banquet, Mr Longbottom Flies, Hogwarts Forever and the Moving Stairs, The Norwegian Ridgeback and Change of Season, The Quidditch Match, Christmas at Hogwarts, The Invisibility Cloak and the Library Scene, Fluffy's Harp, In the Devil's Snare and the Flying Keys, The Chess Game, the face of Voldemort, leaving Hogwarts and Hedwig's theme. There is also, right, look, this was a pound. This was one pound, right? There is a sticker over this. I've spat everywhere. Let me get the sticker off. Oh, that came off just so satisfyingly. So we've got a CD2 special edition. So the contents of this one is Electric Arts Harry Potter video game pre preview and screensaver. Uh, Lego video game preview and then we've got film trailers oh sorry Lego video game preview film trailers um English language trailer French German Italian and uh, yeah it just goes through oh Harry Potter poster gallery and a wallpaper this is exciting very very exciting I really like this and has anyone got this what's the special um edition CD like that was not my arse this was it was this thing yeah, has anyone got this? Let me know in the comments. I mean, look at these, even inside lot. Ah, let's have a look at this. I am massively excited that this is in my possession. I really, really am. Is... Oh, you get a poster. It's Harry and a Hedwig. How lovely is that? Oh, that is so nice. And then you've got some other artworks on there too. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if the light glares in the way. So you've got an upside down Dumbledore, but you've seen him the right way up. We've got, oh, Wingardium Leviosa, the scene in the classroom there with Flitwick. We've got Hagrid. Oh, his lantern in the dark forest. And then Harry getting his letter to Hogwarts. Honestly, yes, I, how does this work? I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm excited to have this. There we go. I love it. Okay, I can't get that back in, so, so we'll try that later. Right, so are you ready for this? I'm going to have to move back because it's a biggish item, right? Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Mystery at Hogwarts game. So when I went to the checkout to pay for this, the lady said that she used to play this. Um, I've never had this in my possession at all. I've never played it, but she said it's a little bit like Cluedo, but magical. So I'm rather excited. I've not even played Cluedo before. And it's never been opened. I've just realised it's never, it, it's taped on every thing 
I need to open this. We're going to look at this together, but to do this, I need something to open. I don't want to get up. I might have some nail scissors. Bear with me. I wonder if tweezers will work. It works! Right. Okay, tweezers work. Just bear with me. All right, just be patient. I'm nearly there. Thank you for your patience. Okay, we're in. <gasps> Are you ready? I'm gonna, right, this is the back. Oh my days, I'm excited to see this. Right, I'm gonna open it and see if I can tilt it. If not, we're gonna have to change camera angle. Ah, so this is what we're met with. So this is the board. Oh, this must have been opened. No, I don't think it has ever been opened. <gasps> right, I'm gonna have to set the camera up differently. You're gonna have to come down here with me. Okay, I need to hoover, excuse the carpet. <clears throat> so, oh, look at this. <gasps> that is gorgeous. That is new. That's not been opened before. Look at this board, hang on. Oh my word, that is so colourful. This is what I love about the 2001. The colours, yes. I love it. I absolutely love this. There's my house, there's Ravenclaw. I absolutely love this so far. Right, so, what do we have? This has never been used, guys. This has never been used. Yes, it has. Flora, don't look. Okay, so we do, it has been used then, but it's very been very well looked after, I must say. So we do have these sheets. I'm not quite sure what they are yet, but all will be revealed. So you've got Professor Snape Potions, McGonagall Transfiguration, August Filch, Filch's office, Argus, did I say Algus? <laughs> Argus Filch's office, Madame Pint's library, Professor Quirrell, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Madame Hooch, Flying Class, so yeah, we have the, we have classes, culprits, Draco, Vincent, Gregory, Fred and George, and then we've got some victims here, Harry, Ron, Hermione, Neville and Mrs. Norris, and then we've got some spells, Petrificus, Totalus, Locomotor, Mortis, uh, Wingardium Leviosa, uh, Forgetfulness Potion and Sleeping Potion and they do say the same on all of them so we've got some little sheets there that you can obviously write on. We've got some cards here so Harry Potter, Locomotor, Motor. okay so these are, oh no that one's damaged, uh, Professor McGonagall, Professor, oh Professor Bins, Professor Snape, um, you are protected throughout the game. All ghostly attacks allows player to pass through the ghost. Hold this card. So these are cards that obviously are in that you can have in play. So obviously it'll be luck of the draw sort of thing. You answered a po you answered a potions question correctly. Player of your choice must show you all their corporate cards. This actually looks really fun. You learned a new spell in Defense Against the Dark Arts. Player of your choice must show you all their forbidden spell cards. I am loving this. So last, I'll just show you this one as well. Hagrid shows you the way. Switch places with any player on the board. And then we've got this one. It's got a, it's got a key. Hang on, it's not focusing. Focus. It's got a key there. These are just so colourful and so lovely. Filch's office. Flying class. Gregory Goyle, <laughs> look at him. Dumbledore's past. Dumbledore grants you go anywhere, grants you go anywhere on the board. Mrs. Norris. Sleeping potion. Petric Petrificus Totalus. Forgetfulness potion. Ron Weasley. Fred Weasley, I am loving the artwork so much. I really am. Oh. Crab looks a bit miserable. Welcome to Hogwarts. A look at a total of three cards from any player. We are going to look at the um, instructions together to, at this, to this game. Dark Arts, Professor Quirrell. These, honestly, I am... Oh, there's our Hermione look. Bless her. Just artwork is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I really love these cards. Uh, what else do we have in the box? Okay, so we have some dice, and it's got the Hogwarts crest on one side. I'm assuming that is the one, because there isn't a one. So that, yeah, that must be meaning that that is the, a one. That didn't make sense. But look at these guys. Oh, so look at these! We've got witches hats. So we've got a green one, a nice blue one, purple. So I'm assuming these are the amounts of plays you can have in the game. Nice silver. We've got yellow. 
a nice red one. And what is this? What is that? Is that Voldemort? Is that meant to be Voldemort? I'm not quite sure. The instructions will tell us. Let me get you back up there so you can see my beautiful face. <laughs> and let's talk about the game. Let's have a look. Okay, so what are we thinking about this game so far? I think it is gorgeous. I really do. Um, I'm actually really excited to play this as a family. So, um, I'm trying to find how many players can play. I'm assuming, oh hang on, it says there, three to six players. That is awesome. That is really, really cool. A lot of games now are like two to four players or two players. And it doesn't affect our household because there is four of us, but it's nice to see that more people can get involved which is really cool so let's have a look at the instructions so objective of the game object of the game some naughty student has been casting illegal spells in one of the classrooms at hogwarts can you solve the mystery and win the game be careful where you point the finger because a wrong guess will cost you everything okay so equipment we've got the halls of hogwarts game board we've got two dice uh harry potter playing pieces um, oh, sorry. Why did I say Harry Potter? It says hat. It doesn't even... It's just a short word. What's wrong with me? Hat playing pieces. There should be six, which I do believe there was. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Oh, the ghost. Tan translucent blue figure. So you're just a ghost. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. It looked like it had a hood, all right? It looked like Voldemort. And then we've got green Hogwarts cards, blue hint cards, and hunch checklist pad. So, the halls of Hogwarts, classrooms, where players can ask professors for hints or test a hunch. Hogwarts Crest, the start place for players, hat playing pieces. Ghost, ghost start in haunt, the blue dot where the ghost figure starts the game. I'm sorry. The blue dot where the ghost figure starts the game. Oh, okay, so hang on, let me get the board. So, oh. Oh, this just, this just keeps on giving. So there's your blue dot there. That's where the ghost sits, apparently. Right, okay. I get it now. Okay, the great hall where players go if bumped in by the ghost. Broken passages. Gaps in the second floor passageway that can be patched with the correct passage card. There's just so much going on in this board, honestly, guys. I just can't figure it all out. But I'm sure it will, uh, it will happen. It will... I will figure it out. So you've got secret passages, a shortcut through Hogwarts that can only be opened with the correct passage, and Fluffy's trapped door, which is the lifty bit. Okay, oh, and it does have, that, which is really cool, a little diagram down here explaining where everything is on the board. If you want to pause that, hang on, let me get it in focus. If you want to pause that and have a proper look, see where it all is on the board, I'll let you. I just, I'm struggling to hold the board up and keep it all in a frame as well because it's quite a big board. So setting up the game, so you unfold the game board, that would be a great start. Give each player a hunch checklist, which is obviously these things. That makes me laugh. Flora, don't look. <laughs> I actually am not going to get rid of that. I'm not going to get rid of it. So each player chooses a hat um, playing piece and places it on the Hogwarts crest, which... I'm assuming it means the centre of the board. Like I said, I'll figure it out. Place the ghost figure on the ghost starting haunt, which will be the blue dot. Separate the green Hogwarts cards from the blue hint cards. Shuffle and set the green Hogwarts cards face down to the side of the board. With the oldest player as a dealer, uh, separate the blue hint cards into the following piles. So staff cards, corporate cards, spell cards and victim cards. Obviously, we've been looking at those. Uh, place each pile face down and shuffle individually. Remember, with the pile of staff cards are in. Draw one card from each hint card. Do not look at the cards. Place the four cards face down under Fluffy's trapdoor out of play. From the staff card pile, deal out one card to each player um so yeah it tells you the setup there how to solve the mystery solve the mystery by guessing which staff culprit spell and victim hint cards are under fluffy's trapdoor okay this is really really cool so it is a lot like cluedo actually isn't it really when you visit professors <coughs> professors in their classroom you can draw a hint card or test a hunch by asking the question professor staff card did you catch, culprit card, casting a spell card, spell on, 
victim card. That is really cool. The other players disprove your hunch by showing you the hint card you named that they have in their hands. This is so cool. By discovering which cards are still in play, you can figure out which cards are under the trap door. When you solve the mystery, race to the trap door, name the cards and win the game. I actually really like the sound of this. I'm so excited. And then obviously it tells you let's play. So there's the steps for each person's turn. So each player rolls one die. The highest roll goes first. Play proceeds in turn to the left. On your turn, roll both dice and move toward a classroom or play as indicated see moving and playing oh that's the next bit in each classroom you will visit the professor matched with that classroom on the hunch checklist you may either draw a hint card or test a hunch you may not do both while visiting a professor if any cards remain in the hint deck you may collect a hint card draw a card from the hint deck and keep it in your hand you may not test a hunch with the snake professor with the same professor from whom you drew draw a hint card in a single turn when you think you know which four hint cards are under fluffy's trap door head for the trap door as fast as you can the first player to arrive at fluffy's trap door and point the finger at the correct professor wins the game what happens if you don't get it right though do you just lose everything is that what it means i want to know about this moving ghost so moving the ghost during your turn you may move the ghost to bump or block other players so bumping players if you move the ghost and land on a space occupied by another player's hat playing piece your opponent's hat is sent to the great hall and you get to look at one of the bump players hints cards this is so like really good well thought out you may bump more than one player in a turn and an exact roll is not needed. The bumped player holds all of their hint cards face down for you to randomly draw a card, look at it and return to the player. Blocking players. On your turn, you may choose to move the ghost directly in front of a room or along a second floor passage. Since players cannot jump the ghost, they must use their roll to move it or find another way around it. If you begin your turn trapped in a classroom by the ghost or another player's hat, you may move the ghost if your dice rolls allows it or you may test a hunch in this classroom again even though you did so on your previous term okay so note the ghost cannot enter a classroom and a player who draws that you are protected from ghostly attacks card is unaffected by the ghost throughout the game absolutely yes this game is quite in depth i'm loving the sound of it it's going to be one of them, you're going to have to play it a few times to get used to it sort of thing. I do really like this. I'm just going to see what happens if you guess wrong under the trap door. Okay, so if even one hint card does not match your statement, the cards under the trap door, you are wrong. You are expelled from Hogwarts and the game. Put the four cards back under the trap door, deal out your hint cards one at a time to, to the other players, starting with the player on your left. Play continues as above. So yeah, if you get the hints wrong, so there is that pressure that, but what if I'm wrong? So you're going to question yourself as well as the game. <laughs> that is just my that's that's proper like plays with your mind doesn't it i'm really excited to play this and i don't know when we're going to get to play it because we're busy at the minute doing the living room but um we will play it one weekend together as a family i think because i think it's a game that we'll all enjoy let's just have another look i'll try and show you the best i can of the board and there's the trapdoor lot how colorful is this i've said it and i'm going to say it again the 2001 aesthetic, it's just gorgeous of Harry Potter. It's absolutely gorgeous. The colours are so colourful. They give off Weasley Wizard Weezers vibes, this does. Don't you think? I'm really excited to play this and I love my new CD as well. I'm honestly so, so pleased. And the worrying thing is, I mean, I thought this wasn't opened, so the charity shop must have taped the box down. But I, th the, the problem with buying things like puzzles and games like this from a charity shop, it's always a worry that pieces are going to be missing, especially if it's a puzzle. Could you imagine getting to the end of a puzzle and two or three pieces are missing, even one piece? It's like, oh my days. Um, and it's always been a worry, but I just couldn't pass on this. But it looks like everything is in apart from one of these has been written on which does not bother me and as well obviously you might think well what do you do when you run out of these I mean you get quite a lot on there but you could just make more like I could do that on the computer do you know what I mean so I can make more it's fine 
it's absolutely fine but only two have been used by the looks of it unless they've thrown some I can't actually tell I can't tell but as far as I'm aware only two have been used um but if more have been used then that thing was quite thick as well so but it still is it's all three were used there's another one here they've done it in glitter gel pens as well I've just realized we've got purple blue and pink have they kind of I'm wondering whether the purple user the pen purple pen user had the purple hat the pink had the ready pink hat it is actually a ready pink color and then obviously the blue had the blue hat I wonder if they like took it really seriously and had gel pens to match that <laughs> maybe you never know you never know but I am happy with that. Has anybody got this? Has anybody played this? Please let me know in the comments because I'd like to know your thoughts on the game. I can really, really honestly tell you right now, even without me not playing it yet, I'm going to enjoy this game. I love a good board game. Games are fun. And I think, yeah, it's going to be fun to do. Have you ever walked into a charity shop and seen something Harry Potter and it's like, wow, bargain, buy? Whether it's vintage or not, let me know in the comments because I love a good charity shop find. Um, not just Harry Potter either. I just do love a good charity shop find. Charity shops are amazing for things like this. But like I said, something told me to go to that charity shop yesterday and have a look. And I just, I remember going to the ornament section and then something told me to go straight over to the kids section and I found obviously the board game and then I went straight over to the books, DVDs and CDs for some reason. And I never look at the CDs, but there it was right in front of me at the front of the shelf, this Harry Potter CD. And I was like, wow. So that's going in the car. I'm not gonna lie. Matt, it doesn't matter. I don't care what you think. We are playing this a full blast because it's cool. Anyway, I am gonna go. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. You know I love your company and I will speak to you all in my next video. Bye, Potter Poppets.